In today's world, dynamic SQL is a key aspect for every data developer. Sooner or later, data developers always get requirements to write dynamic SQL. The execute immediate statement is a very important tool, providing data developers with a method to execute dynamic SQL queries in Snowflake. Execute immediate is not a new concept in SQL engines. If you are familiar with data development in Oracle, SQL Server, or MySQL, you are likely encountered and utilized execute immediate to execute dynamic SQL within your stored procedures development workflow. So this chapter, chapter 19, is all about execute immediate in the context of stored procedures and anonymous block while creating them using Snowflake SQL scripting. The focus of this video will not be limited to just SQL syntax. This is a completely hands-on tutorial and we will understand how Execute Immediate will help data developers to build efficient stored procedures and more importantly, its limitations. So stay tuned until the end of this video. We have already covered many important concepts in this playlist. If you haven't seen these chapters yet, please watch it after completing this video. The links for all the videos are available in the description section below. Alternatively, you can also visit my Medium blog page to find the sample SQL script. As a part of this video, we will cover all the important points listed here in this tree map. Pause the video, review them before you proceed. Welcome to my channel Data Engineering Simplified. For all my demonstration and SQL scripting execution, I will be utilizing the free trial edition of Snowflake on AWS Cloud. All my tutorials are recorded in 4K resolution. So please adjust it if you are playing this tutorial in the low resolution like 720p or 1080p. If you want to learn quickly, you can change the playback speed of this tutorial and for that consider watching it at 1.25x or 1.5x speed. To share your feedback directly to me, feel free to message me on my Instagram account or join my exclusive Facebook group to be part of the Snowflake community. And finally, if you are interested in systematically enhancing your Snowflake skill, check out my premium Udemy courses. Just scan the QR code and access my Udemy page. I am in my SnowSite web UI and this is my worksheet called Execute Immediate. And if you look into the line number 3 to line number 8, this is my anonymous block. And here I am using execute immediate statement. So if you look into this anonymous block, I am changing my schema and I would like to know how many tables I have it in this schema. And from that result, I am trying to extract name of the table, owner of the table, number of rows the table has, how much space the table has occupied and that I am doing it using result scan function. So here is my keyword called execute immediate and after that I have a string which is nothing but a complete executable SQL statement. Now if you look into the line number 6 I have execute immediate and this is my SQL statement as a string and the result of this execution is nothing but a result set which I am assigning it to this result set variable and finally returning output of the result set to the caller. Now let me execute this and let's see how the result looks like. So this is how the result look like. Uh, this is my name, owner, rows and bytes. And this is how the name, owner, rows and bytes. Looks good. Now if I want, I can also simply remove this execute immediate and I can still fetch the result. I have removed the execute immediate keyword from here. Let's see whether it works or not. I got the result, looks good. Now, if I simply remove this part and let's try to run this, I'm still getting the result. So, so if you are not creating your SQL statement using some dynamic variable, it is not necessary that you have to use execute immediate. However, if you are going to create some dynamic SQL string on fly, where you do not know how your final query would look like, in that case, execute immediate is very important. If some project is following execute immediate way of executing every query, then it is primarily the choice of the team, but it is not much that every query has to be a candidate query for the execute immediate. Now, let me go back to the previous version. Let's, so I have converted this anonymous block into a stored procedure. Let's create this stored proc. It is created and let me call this. 
So when I am running this anonymous block within my stored procedure body, it says that uncaught exception, it is a statement error which we have seen in our previous episode and stored procedure does not support the keyword use. So while running the stored procedure, you cannot change your context and that's what it is complaining. So for now, I will comment this line and I will simply recreate the stored proc and then I will call the stored proc. So it got the same result because here my context and role both are able to access the schema. So it is important to remember that just because your anonymous block is running without any problem, it is not necessary that it will run within the stored procedures and some of these statements are prohibited being part of the stored procedures because stored proc has a concept of owner's right and caller's right that we have already covered in one of this video and if you haven't seen the complete concept of stored procedures you can watch this video. So let's try to understand what if my query is very long and it cannot come in a single line how execute immediate can help me. So we have this multi-line SQL statement where I am doing the same thing what I have done it in the previous part. So here I am switching my context, running a show table command and here I am trying to fetch all the column from my result scan which will be nothing but a result of this particular statement and to support the multi-line SQL statement I am using this double dollar sign and within the double dollar sign you can write any string character and it will work without any issue. So this is another flavor of execute immediate so which improves a code readability and as well as it bring a better degree of maintainability while working with a complex SQL statement. So let me execute this. Okay, this got the same result. Now, is it possible that I can write a multiple line statement without having execute immediate? Let's check that. So I got the same result. So whether you follow execute immediate or you follow this approach in both the cases, Snowflake supports multi-line SQL statement. So, so far, whether you are using execute immediate or without execute immediate, there is no issues as long as your SQL statements are not having any special character which creates a conflict, any other character which are a keyword character within your SQL statement. Now, going back to the previous version of this anonymous block and let me put a semicolon here and let's try to rerun that. So with a semicolon, I got the same result. Now what if I try to run another statement within this double dollar sign? So now I added another SQL statement. So this is my semicolon, which says that this is my first SQL statement. And if I say this is my second SQL statement, let's see what happens. So it ended with an statement error and it says multiple SQL statement is not supported. Okay. So this is my one logical statement and this is my second statement. So if you are calling a SQL statement using execute immediate, it should be one single logical statement. It doesn't support multiple SQL statement as a part of a single execute immediate. So this is one of the limitation. Another, let's talk about another scenario. And in this scenario, I'm trying to simulate can I use execute immediate to execute a SQL statement and if the SQL statement is returning a number or a string can that be assigned to a variable. So if you look into the line number five this is my variable name I am still using the RS but the data type is a number and this execute immediate is primarily returning the count of my result scan. So can I use execute immediate for this purpose. So I have changed this variable to data count and let's first run this. Here it says syntax error unexpected immediate line number six. So this is my line number six and what if I change the data type to result set should it work and here I have to give table. So I got the result. So execute immediate always return a result set data type it doesn't return anything else. So if you have a situation where you have to assign value to a variable which is non result set execute immediate is not the solution. So so far we have seen the scenario where execute immediate has not brought any significant value to the data developer. So now this is my another anonymous block where I have defined couple of variables as a text variable where SQL statements are assigned to this variable and I am using this SQL statement as a variable to run it via execute immediate. So if you see this syntax it is start with execute immediate then I am using the name of the variable and the name of the variable is starting with a colon character. So it means it is a variable likewise here it is a show command which is exactly the show table and then I am taking I am creating a result set variable 
which is executing the select statement. We have seen these examples in our past episodes. So now let me execute this anonymous block and I got the result name and owner. So it is possible that you are passing a SQL statement as a part of a stored procedures or you are creating a SQL statement dynamically. Now here what can I do? Let's say that so here I can also use the double pipe sign to concatenate a string. Let me add another variable called and I can use the pipe sign here. And now if I run it, it will still produce the same result. So this way you can create a dynamic SQL statement and that SQL statement can be executed using your execute immediate. Now let's talk about parameter binding and how the parameter binding is supported by the execute immediate. So if you look into this anonymous block, here I have defined the three variable which is called change context, show command and select SQL. So here I am changing my context. Here I am just running a show table and then finally using the result scan, I am fetching the name and the owner of the table. This is my where clause where the name should match to this question mark and this question mark will be replaced during the runtime. So if you look into the line number 28, here I am giving a variable name called table name. In your stored procedures, this will be an input parameter. And if you look into the line number 30, here I am calling execute immediate and this is my select SQL statement, which is this statement and this table name will come from here. Okay. And what would happen when you pass this using keyword followed by the table name, it will automatically go and replace this question mark. Now let's run this and see how this parameter binding works. So I only got one result rather than getting all the result. So I have altered this query where I added rows and bytes as a part of select statement. And here along with a name, I am passing another where clause, which is checking if the number of rows are higher than the input number of rows. And here I am specifically mentioning that if a table has more than five rows and the name of the table matches with employee, please bring the result. Again, a very hypothetical case. And if you look into this using parameter, this first table name will go and match with it. And the second row count will match with this question mark character and automatically replace it. So I got the result employee system admin rows and byte. Now let's go and quickly check our query profile. So when I hover to this query history, here the question marks are visible and it is not telling what parameter it has taken during the runtime. Now there is one more alternative which Snowflake provides. Instead of giving a question mark, you can give colon one and colon two. If I execute this statement, this will also work. So it is slightly more readable. So this is my one and this is my second input parameter. So I got the result and this is how this overall execute immediate work to create a dynamic SQL statement. Now there is one specific limitation with execute immediate. Let's say I want to replace this name with a variable name. Let me try that and see what result does it bring. So if you look into this scenario on the line number 21, I have replaced the select column name with the first question mark. And here I have a second question mark and here I have a third question mark. I'm expecting this field one will go and sit here and the value of the field one is name. And this table name will go and sit here and this row count will go and sit here. This is what my expectation. Let's see whether execute immediate support this kind of variable replacement. So it says invalid identifier on line number 18 this is again a statement error. It is not able to execute that statement with a question mark. So your execute immediate will primarily bind the parameter for your where clause and not for any other keyword or any other part of your SQL statement. So always remember that if you want to dynamically replace a variable, that variable should be part of your where clause predicate and not any part of your SQL statement because execute immediate cannot replace those variable dynamically and that SQL statement will end with an error. And if you really want to achieve that, you have to use the pipe sign. So this SQL statement will be dynamically created with respect to these variable. However, this question mark will be replaced using using keyword while running the execute immediate. Now let's try that out. 
so i got the result now let's talk about session level parameter and how to use session level parameters with execute immediate so i am extending the same use case where i have created a session level parameter called sql in session which is having this sql statement and along with question mark character and here if you look into the line number 29 i am using this session level parameter with dollar sign when i use this dollar character any variable followed by the dollar character is representing this session level parameter and this is also applicable for stored procedures as well as anonymous block so we have seen that any variable which is declared in the declare section or here as a let keyword as a local variable in that case we use colon sign to access the variable however when you have a session level variable that you can access it through dollar sign so it is possible that you might be calling a lot of stored procedures and each of these stored procedures is looking for a common session level parameter and when you use this dollar sign you can access those session level parameter let me create this session level variable and if i have to access it i can access it using select statement now my session level variable is set now let me execute this anonymous block it brought the same result okay so this is how the execute immediate statement works within snowflake stored procedure and anonymous block hope you got something valuable from this video if you did please hit the like button your support not only recognizes the work behind this free content but also helps other to discover this playlist and if you think it can help someone else in your team feel free to share thanks for watching and let's spread the knowledge and growth together